And these people couldn't say Musa bin Baik, so they said Mozambique. Jabal Tariq, they couldn't say Jabal Tariq, they said Jibaralta. See how they promoted the names. We can't imagine that this is Muslim names. Ma'amanullah, with the help of Allah, our brethren, the traders, they reached the Philippines, so they said Manila. Look, these were our places. The Muslim has been a challenge. They conquered the place, now they say Mozambique. Musa bin Baik, Mozambique. So the Muslim is a challenge. And another publication, England, he said the Muslims are coming. This is a Christian publication. He said the Muslims are coming. At one time they were shouting the Turks are coming, knocking at the gates of Vienna. Now the Muslims are coming. Where? To England. They have now about 300 masjids in the country. Not all like Regent's Park Mosque, but humble things. But 300 masjids in the country in a short period of time. Buying out old churches, buying synagogues, Jewish places of worship, uh, bingo halls, dancing halls, buying them over, turning them into masjids. The Muslims are coming. So we are a challenge to them. Wherever. You put up a masjid, it's a challenge. But at the same time, the masjid is an attraction. It is a thing of curiosity. They want to know what is all this about. You see, because the bulk of the Westerners, they don't really know what Islam is. They confuse us. When they look at us racially, for example, me, as I'm standing here before you, I look like a man from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent. You can mistake me for a Pathan, a Punjabi, or a Gujarati from the Bombay province. Actually, I'm from there. I'm a Hindi. I'm a man from Hind. Hindi. But they do not know, the bulk of these people, they don't know the difference between a Hindi and a Hindu. No, they don't know. They think every Hindi is a Hindu. See, Hindu is a person who follows a certain religious ideas, ideology. A Hindi means one who originates in that subcontinent called India. That's all. You could be a Muslim, you can be a Hindu, you can be a Christian, you can be a Buddhist, you can be anything. You come from there, you are a Hindi, but you are not a Hindu. But now, in my country, because the majority of the people there, people originating from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent, are Hindus. They are Hindis and Hindus. The majority of the Indians in, the, in India, in Hind, are Hindus. So the overwhelming impression is that every Hindi is a Hindu. So, we have our masjids. And they think there is no difference between a masjid and a temple. They don't know the difference. At one stage in our history, around the 60s, the government of South Africa, they clamped down upon us. See, we had just started growing wings. And we started delivering lectures in the city halls of Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town, these are the big centers. And the city halls are all in white areas, European areas. So we started delivering lectures on a comparative basis. What the Bible says about Muhammad. Muhammad, the natural successor to success Christ. Muhammad, the greatest. Christ in Islam. Was Christ crucified and on and on. We started delivering these lectures, trying to get the people to know what Islam is. And they clamp down, not because of us, but under their own philosophy of separating the races, they call apart hate, keeping people apart. They said, no more, you can't go to the city halls, you black people, we are black people. I'm a black man in South Africa. You see, our chairman is a black man. <laughs> no, no, it's not the color of your skin. It's got nothing to do with the color of your skin. Is where you originate. Your origin, your fertilizer, where did it come from? 
if it came from Europe, you are white. If it came from Asia, you are black. It's not how white you look. No, it's, it's, that's a philosophy. That's a philosophy. Apartheid, keeping people apart. So under that philosophy, they says no more city hall for the black people. You need a special permit, a special license to go there. So they put stumbling blocks now to get these special licenses very difficult. So he said, now look, necessity is the mother of invention. <coughs> we need to deliver the message and now they have blocked us. What are we going to do? So he said, now what we are going to do, we are going to advertise the masjid. The masjid, we're going to advertise our masjid. They can't stop us there. That's our masjid. So we advertise the masjid. In the brochure, they reproduce the municipality, they reproduce for tourists. The places you can visit in my city, for example, they say, you know, visit the ice drome, visit the snake park, visit, you know, the native reserve and on and on. So in that we put our little advert saying, visit the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere. Our masjid in Durban, we are claiming, we are boasting that it is the largest south of the equator because there are hardly any Muslim countries south of the equator. Most of them are north of the equator, so we can boast. On Fridays we get a congregation of 4,000 people, 4,000 Muslims. So we said the visit the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere for a free guided tour phone. phone and we give the phone number and people phone and they make appointments and they come and people tourists when they come they go to the tourist bureau <laughs> they say look this masjid where is this masjid so they'll directly see you go this way that way and the masjid you'll see it there you know in the street from far away you'll see the minaret another man another group they say look the masjid you know, this mosque, where is the mosque? He said, look, you go like this, like that, and then you'll see, you know, a big minaret, you go there. So people are inquiring about the mosque, the mosque, the mosque. So these people, white people, are business-like people. They say, hey, this is opportunity for making, doing business. See, people want to go to the mosque, they want to go to the mosque. He said, now we will put the mosque on its tours. So they created a special tour called the Oriental Tour. They are very ingenious. The white people, they know how to do business. If there is a hunger for anything, they said, look, we will provide, we will sell, we will do business. So they created what is called the Oriental Tour. In the Oriental Tour, the first place they come to is the masjid. From there they go to the Indian market, where they buy curios and spices. From there they go to a place five miles out of town, where they have tea and cakes, and they show the elite Indian area. Then they drive down to the Amgeni River, and on the river bank they end off in a place called Amgeni Road, and in Amgeni Road the largest temple in South Africa is there. The largest masjid south of the equator is in Durban, and the largest temple south of the equator I'm sorry, in South Africa is also in Durban. So people come. Now, when they read about a mosque, they do not know the difference between a mosque and a temple. They think maybe this is a synonymous term, different word meaning the same thing. So they come. They come along because they want to be entertained. They want to see something nice and funny in the masjids. That is their objective. They want to be entertained. So they come and it becomes our duty to receive these people, the tourists, explain to them what goes on and we give them free literature. Free literature. It's an opportunity for us.